I'm going to go over some basic uh, terminology and location of different parts and, and uh, name a few different things as well so that um, while we're identifying these things as we go through the maintenance that, uh, that we know what we're talking about. So we'll start on the outside. Uh, this is a, just a typical configuration uh, machine, a Dedicard card 150. Of course you have the, the hood, um, the LCD, you have the, uh, the locking mechanism, you have the output door with the output hopper, and the input door. Uh, these arms serve a purpose, and I'll show what that does. Uh, there's some plastic trim pieces. This is a plastic piece. There's a front access uh, door. This one actually got broken. There's a lip on the front of it that covers the uh, motherboard. You have this bottom trim piece here. And, of course, the case mostly is metal, sheet metal. Uh, you have the LCD ribbon cable. And then this is just a... Uh, a ground wire that goes to the LCD and then on the back of it you have three hinges the power uh, supply is actually underneath this there's a fan in here this is where your communication uh, port cables come through uh, your host and your uh, communications um, uh, uh, service ports on this side you have the on-off switch, the power input, and then again the, uh, the power supply is actually on the bottom right here where these, these screws are on the bottom. Alright, inside the machine we'll go from the, uh, the back to the front. This is the transport module. It's the entire thing. It has these shafts. This lead screw uh, shaft which drives the uh, the picker there's a there's a belt driven motor down here stepper motor that drives this back and forth with that lead screw this is the picker uh, carriage on the uh, transport module and it has this lead screw that operates from the a belt on a belt and this stepper motor on top here uh, there's a sensor which tells it when it's in the home position. Um, underneath, um, I will show some pieces as we go through, but there's, there, there are two teeth that operate. You can hear that click that when the, uh, the card picks, these teeth grab, is what, or what grab the card. This is the transport ribbon cable, and it goes down into the uh, a plug that goes to the motherboard. There's a home sensor down here. Turn the light on, maybe we can see better. Home sensor down here for the transport unit. You have the X exit, uh, axis, which is left and right, and then you have Y axis, which is in and out. So this will tell you the home on the on the X axis and where on the carriage. This is the input output. It has uh, various functions, mainly to put the cards in to be picked to go through the process of creating a card. Um, this is your input hopper where you place the cards. You can also, uh, these, these arms right here serve a, do serve a purpose. You can, when this door is shut, this, this bracket guards from, and it locks so that uh, if you have, financial institutions have cards in here, they can't be stolen. Um, so if you're doing a single card, you can put it in there and when you shut the, the door, it pushes it in underneath these, these platform guides where the cards would set on top. That's the purpose of these. Uh, so then when the, the picker goes up, I mean when the hopper goes up to uh, create a card, it'll push that one card through rather than the, the cards in the hopper. So that's what those are for. Uh, there's a little tab. You can see it right there on the end of this. And that's what holds it in that slot on, the, on this part of the hopper. That's easy to break. It's just a piece of plastic, molded plastic on this arm. Uh, so we do want to be careful putting pressure and, and uh, excess stress on this because you can break that. Uh, I do have a fix and I'll go over that in a later series, but um, it's a pain in the butt when this breaks because it'll fall down here and you got to lift it up manually every time you want to shut the door. Uh, it, has a, it has six sensors on this hopper. This is the out input empty. Um, so on the inside here, it's got this little tab when the cards go down, it pushes that tab in. It 
pulls this out, this flag out from that that sensor down there, so it tells it there's cards. And when that tab goes into the photo cell sensor, it tells it that the cards are empty. Uh, there's a this is the throat gap motor. The throat gap is the space here that allows the card to go through this plate and this uh, support plate. This is the throat gap plate and the support plate. And there's a little notch right here on these parts of the of the metal. The card sits in that, and that's that is what pushes it into the gap, throat gap. So this motor adjusts the height. You can that's one of the calibration adjustments you can make the, uh, on the height because there are varying thicknesses of cards. Um, we only suggest you use the the standard cards that we provide, but uh, you can adjust the height, and that is a, something over time that can go out of calibration that that needs to be done. You don't want it so high that more than one card can go through, but it you want it only enough gap for one to go through, but sometimes it'll lower to where you can't get any through. So that there, it's belt driven and it, it, uh, it, it'll raise and lower that gap. And that's what this is. You have, uh, this is a flag sensor in the arm. And this flag will go between this photo cell uh, sensor here and tell it when it's full. So when the cards, when the cards come in, when you shut this door, it's got this notch right here, this uh, shaft right here on the edge of that pushes the arm back and it lowers this it lowers this flag. So as cards come in they'll stack up and it'll raise that up and once it stacks up to the point where the flag comes between the photocell sensor it tells it's full and it'll stop operation on the, on the machine. Um, it's mounted by a plastic arm and a foot that mounts to the uh, to the floor. I mean, the base of the uh, the unit. Um, so we want to be careful of that as well. These things can break. It's not common, but it can be done. Um, you can bend this stuff pretty. You can see how easily that moves. So we want to be careful messing with that. You have the mag encoder. It's got a rubber uh, wheel. And, and the, the, the mag encoder is actually underneath that wheel. So the, the mag goes, this is a, uh, it'll uh, right on the bottom. So the, the car, mag card will go face down. It runs it through here. And that's what writes it. Um, it's mounted to the base right here. The, the, these do have an option for a front or a back mag. So there's two different cables down here. So the the cable that says rear mag should be the one plugged in. Then we have the emboss unit. You have, uh, this is called the driver. Behind this spring, it actually will push down. These keys have a cone shape, and it's cone shape, uh, you know, male here, it's cone shaped female on the other side of this driver. So it guides it down, on the and there's one on the top and the bottom. You can see down here there's another spring and cam down here. So it puts pressure below, with this cam. It goes like this and that action, that one below and one above, using stepper motors. There's a sensor for the home position on the wheel. There's a, a sensor for the punch right here. It tells it when it's in this position here, the one on the bottom for the die. So you have, actually you have three motors. You have the home motor, the die, and the punch motor with sensors on each of those. We have the rear and dent module. This is for putting the, uh, the numbers on the back of the card. It doesn't in indent, it, I mean it doesn't uh, emboss, it indents. It actually has, it has these flat anvils on the top and then it has the, the keys on the bottom. And so this when it pressures, it actually just pushes it into the plastic and doesn't emboss all the way through the card. All right, now we have the uh, the topper. This is the uh, it has the topper has one motor, and that's for the take up. This will spin, which once the it actuates and and puts foil on a card, this will spin to advance the foil to a, a blank spot on the foil. 
this is a sensor that tells it that it's moving. It has these flags on this wheel. All right, you can see there's slots. It's a, it's a round wheel with slots. So it, when it goes down into that photocell sensor here, every time the, the sensor uh, sees the gap, and then there's not a gap, and then a gap, then not a gap, it tells it that it's moving. Because if you're not, if it doesn't advance, then uh, you'd be topping on the same spot every time. There'd be no new foil and it wouldn't top correctly. On the rear and dent, the same thing. Right here, uh, this wheel as it spins, as it advances, you can see it has notches in that flag wheel as well. So it, it senses the gaps and knows that, that it's advancing. And this is the motor right here that advances the, the rear and dent. All right, so you have a, a platen. We'll go back to this. You have a platen, and uh, this one actually is pretty clean. So we want to, you know, that's one of the things we'd look at. But that's what heats up, and that, and uh, it actuates down, and that that's what it uh, that with the heat and, and pressure, it puts the it transfers the foil from the the roll to the card. And there's uh, various sensors in here. One that tells it it actuates. One for the the temperature. Um, here's one right here that tells it that it actuates because it'll push that little flag up and down through there. Uh, this is a sensor in your reject when the card and when the uh, when the unit determines that a card was created in, uh, incorrectly, some type of an error, it will dump it right here, and when it uh, fills up, the 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 last card on the top of the stack here will go into this sensor and it'll stop operations because the reject tray is full. Um, of course that's the motherboard. Um, we don't want to mess with that any more than we have to and we want to make sure we're using static protection. On my workstation here I have a, a static pad and then I also, when I'm touching that, I, I go ahead and put my wristband on as well. Um, we can repair that but it gets kind of costly. New ones are very, very expensive um, if you can even find them. So that's basic uh, operation, basic terms, uh, terminology of it. Um, we'll get more in depth with some of the other things, but on the basic maintenance, that's pretty much all, all you're going to need to know, and we'll go from there.